Hello students! In this video, I'm going to expand on electron configurations to now talk about the exceptional cases for electrons configurations for transition metal ions. So I want to emphasize these exceptions only apply to the electron configurations for transition metal ions. And the term that I'm using here to describe these is called de-dumping. And it will become evident why I'm using that term here in a little bit. I want to emphasize this is not a technical term, but I'm using it as a descriptive term so that we can keep it distinguished from S-promotion. So remember, S-promotion was an exceptional case in the electron filling patterns for neutral species. And there were five neutral atoms that underwent S-promotion. But de-dumping is now talking about transition metal ions only. So we have seen how in neutral species, in especially in neutral transition metal atoms, the 4S subshell is lower in energy than the 3D subshell. So you have 4S and 3D. And because of this, again this is a neutral species, because of this then you generally fill the electrons in the 4S subshell before you fill them in the 3D subshell. And then we have exceptions to that with five elements, chromium, molybdenum, copper, silver, and gold each of which will promote an S electron to allow the atom to get a half filled or fully filled D subshell. So this is in the neutral species. That's generally the filling pattern with the exception of those five neutral atoms. However, in ions of transition metals, the 4S subshell is higher in energy than the 3D. So in ions of transition metals, it looks like this. And notice what this means is that when we are filling electrons into the ions of transition metals, we put them all into the 3D subshell first, all 10 of them to fill it all the way up, before the 4S can get any of them. So basically, we are going to dump the electrons into the 3D subshell before we even put one of them into the 4S. So that's what I'm calling de-dumping. We're just going to dump our electrons all into the 3D subshell first and fill it all up before the 4S subshell gets any. So this means that the 3D electrons are filled in first when constructing the electron orbital diagrams. And again, this is only for transition metal ions. Well, let's put this into practice. So to write the electron configurations for transition metal ions, we follow three simple steps. We're going to identify the noble gas that represents the core electrons. Then we're going to determine the number of additional electrons that that ion has beyond its core. And we're going to assign or dump all of those extra electrons into the D subshell first. So let's see what this looks like. I'll do one for you and then I'll let you do the other. So what is the electron configuration of iron three plus? Let's take a look at this. Here's iron. And we are not going to be talking about the electron configuration for neutral iron. So what are we going to do? We're going to identify the noble gas that represents the core electrons. So if we look back from iron, we get argon. So argon is its noble gas core.
So we've got iron, and then argon is the noble gas core. Then we determine the number of additional electrons the ion has beyond its core. Well, neutral iron had how many additional electrons beyond argon? It used to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It used to have eight electrons beyond argon. How many does it have now? It's a three plus ion, which means it must have lost three electrons to become three positive charged. Well, if it started out with eight beyond its core and it lost three, now it has only five beyond the core. So the iron three plus ion has a core of argon and it has five additional electrons. And we do not count them out this way. 4s2 and 3d3. We don't count them that way. Instead, what does it tell us to do? We're going to assign all five of those extra electrons that it has beyond the argon core, we're going to dump them all into the D subshell. So what's the D subshell? This is the N equals 4. That must be the 3D subshell. So all five of these electrons are preferentially dumped into the 3D subshell. So it has 0 in the 4S, and all five of them go into the 3D. It is optional whether you even include the 4S0 in this. I have included it there so that you specifically know that there are zero electrons in that subshell. But I could just as easily have written this by not mentioning the 4S subshell at all because there are no electrons in it. Okay? So let me review what I just did. I said I've got an iron 3 plus. The 3 plus means that it's lost a few electrons. Number one, I identify the noble gas that represents its core. So here's iron 26, atomic number 26. The noble gas core, I go backward and I look at the noble gas that was immediately preceding it, and it's argon. So argon is its core of electrons. Then I determine the number of additional electrons the ion currently has beyond its core. It used to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. If it's lost 3, now it only has 5. So it has 5 electrons beyond its core. And then I just dump them all into the D subshell. And there they go. All 5 of those electrons beyond the argon core were dumped were assigned preferentially into the 3D subshell because that's where they are most energetically stable. Okay, so I would like for you to do this second problem. And remember, these are exceptional cases to the way that we treat the electron configurations and they only happen for transition metal ions. Okay, so <clears throat> Next problem is for you. What is the electron configuration of rhenium? And that's a plus. So rhenium plus, RH plus. If you've just taken a biology course or maybe you work in the healthcare fields, that may look like an RH factor for blood. But no, it's the RH symbol for rhenium, the element. And it's a positive charge. So rhenium plus, RH plus. And I'll point out rhenium is right here. So I would like for you to write the electron configuration for rhenium plus ion. And it is a transition metal ion, so it must be treated specially with this de-dumping rule. Okay? So go ahead and pause the video and complete that. And when you're done, resume the video and I'll, and I'll complete that answer. 
All right, coming back to this problem, we are going to generate the electron configuration of rhenium plus. So we identify the noble gas that represents the core electrons. First of all, rhenium plus. So the noble gas that represents the core of rhenium's electrons. Here's rhenium. The core, I look back behind it, and I find krypton is the core of the electrons for rhenium plus. Now I determine the number of additional electrons the ion currently has, now that it's an ion, beyond its core. So, how many electrons did it used to have beyond krypton? Well, it used to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. It used to have 9 electrons when it was neutral. But it is now a rhenium plus ion, so it must have lost one electron. So now it only has 8 electrons beyond its core. All right, so it has 8 electrons beyond its core now that it's an ion. We're going to dump them into the D subshell preferentially. So which D subshell is this? Well, this is the n equals 5 row, so this must be the 4D subshell. So in the 4D subshell, we're going to dump all eight of those electrons. And there we have it. And I just want to emphasize again that this is an exceptional case. D-dumping only happens when we're dealing with ions and specifically transition metal ions. S-promotion only happens when we are dealing with neutral atoms and only for those five chromium, molybdenum, copper, silver, and gold. So I have a question for you. If I have a silver plus cation, am I going to be following the S-promotion rule? No, because it is an ion. Silver plus is an ion, so I would not be doing S-promotion. Instead, I would be thinking about the de-dumping exception. Okay? If I were talking about bromine, would I be thinking about S-promotion or de-dumping? No, because neither of them applies to bromine. De-dumping only applies to ions of these transition metals. And S-promotion only applies to neutral chromium, molybdenum, copper, silver, gold.